Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. You're looking very svelte and skating-y in your video. Well, thank you. Nice. Looking yeah. very svelte as well. This is a skating lesson. We are going to be discussing all things going on in skating this week, odds and ends. Um, so yes, I don't know. First. Yes. Okay, we know we got to smash the like button. We got to yeah. subscribe. That that all business. Please yes. do that, actually, for real seas. <laughs> but secondly, I acquired a new vase this week. Oh. From an auction house in New Jersey, no less. The Rag Where in New Jersey? House. I don't know. It's somewhere near the Philadelphia side. Oh. You know, somewhere okay. over Gosh. there. Yeah. And those are my new puffins, in case anyone's asking. Did you acquire something new this week, Dave? <laughs> a new injury, Jonathan. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So oh, I, I purposely have not talked to you about it because I wanted to like just dish it out on the show because I had so many emotions for you when I heard <laughs> So it's funny, I posted a picture on like, it happened on Thursday and um, yeah, just, you know. Um. <laughs> Doing what? Doing off ice jumps, just a, it, stupid. Um, just a two footed single jump to landing on one foot to do the loop. Um, to just warm up combinations and it just rolled. And I, it, it's it's sprained on both sides again. And like the inside- And what happened the first time you were injured earlier in this season? I was doing a double sow off ice and it rolled from inside. Off ice, out. okay. So, and I had better shoes because if you remember when I was I on the ground the last time, and Galena even like tried to blame my shoes and then she felt my shoes and she's like, shoes are absolutely normal. <laughs> I don't think it's as bad as last time based on like I can put weight on it to like transfer and like hobble and trying to stay off of it. But I mean, I think I would compete June 23rd. So I mean, I don't think that the ankle fairy is going to come down from heaven. And I mean, because how long were you off the ice? Two months last time. Two months. And the other time I sprained my ankle, like, nine years ago that my left one I was off for like six or seven weeks so this one's not as bad but let's say I was off a month that would be <laughs> past the event let's say right. I was off three weeks you know and I was trying to think like at what point is it like you got to call it but you know it is what it is it's, it's uh, adult nationals it's not the olympics and I would rather and in the adult show. world is this <laughs> it does always sound funny adult skating sounds like pornographic skating. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yes. But in in the adult skating season, it's really just about these nationals, right? Or they don't have well, other like kind of invitationals that pop up. No, or... like, so it's been like a truncated season, obviously because of COVID, but in a normal year, you have your local competitions, you have sectionals, you um, there's adult nationals, there's a, an international event that's held in Obertsdorf about a year, about a month after adult nationals. So it's pretty much considered like the adult worlds. There's sometimes like a winter games in Austria some years there was, that's where we saw Midori Ito do pairs in 2020. There's also been like a new international event that was held in Vancouver once. So, you know, there are other opportunities for like pretty high level events that are exciting with like, you know, other good level skaters to strive for, so. I mean, I compete because I like to have something to work, work towards. Yeah, and, 100%. And, you know, have the enjoyment of the performance. So, um, but this year with it only being, I was only going to compete that one time. So, um, you know, and with, so I was injured from August to October. I got all my stuff back and it, and then I got COVID right after the holidays in January. Well, actually my dad got COVID first. So I was quarantining and at the end of those two weeks is when I actually came down with it. Probably about 10 days after he got it. I forget, we overlapped with our COVID a little bit. I'd have to go look at like the calendar because it's it's written down because you have to track when you get COVID. And all yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and so I went those and then my mom had it. So I was off for then, then I had to get my program. So it's really been like um, push, you know, to get ready because I, we didn't hear anything about adult nationals until I think about January when I want to hear it, either right before my dad got sick or right after. I, right. Um, I think I got, bit, I'm like trying to remember what dates, everything was posted and I know like people, Aviva who watches the show who runs adult skating, well, she could tell exactly what day everything happened. But, um, you know, it was just a push to get ready. And 
I ha obviously had a back issue a couple of weeks ago, but I was really, really skating well. So I'm disappointed. And also like I was working really, really hard to peak and like knowing where you have to get mentally to be able to go out and nail something. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's very disappointing, but um, yeah, of course it's, yeah. uh, I kind of knew it when it happened. Like I, uh, <laughs> you had that sense about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we haven't like discussed exactly, but I'm also not, you know, irrational. I think the most upsetting thing is that like, you know, I went to DBT therapy and the, you know, the first thing you learn is like radical, radical acceptance. Right. So, and what that teaches is people that are in therapy, like, so you don't get stuck in a past event or anxious about a future event. The first thing you have to accept is like the here and now. So the here and now is that like, you have an injury and <laughs> recovery time is like likely not ideal. <laughs> right. And this situation is likely not gonna be able to compete. If I can compete, that's fabulous. You know, like that would be great. Likely not the situation. I have to say like, when you're processing all of that, and going through it. And I know that people mean really well, but so many people in skating are like, oh, you're fine. You know, come back in a week. You know, just take a week off, you'll be fine. Get a cortisone shot, just don't overdo it. And you're like, so I'm 35, I'm not nine years old. Like the healing Yeah, yeah exa <laughs> exactly. Different. Like I can process and, what's happening here. Yeah. And, and someone's like, well, you have to skate. Like you have to, you worked hard for it. And I'm like. It, well, yes, it just I, tells you so much, doesn't it? It just tells you so. You need the person in your life that's like, okay, you're injured, Basta. That's what we're hap but That's what's happening in this moment. You are injured. Rest the foot. End of story. Yeah. End the story. Yeah. Um. Yes. I mean, like, it, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. Yeah. It's disappointing. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's like we yeah. need to rationalize this. So. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, yeah. But I have to say, like, in that moment, while I'm, like, processing, you know, when you get these messages, it's it's actually more aggravating. It almost feels like someone's, like, invalidating your feelings at that moment when you're, like, especially when they haven't seen your ankle, they don't even see a picture yet, and they're, like, someone was telling me, go, go. and one skating mother, like, she means so well, but she was telling me without even having, she didn't see a picture. She said, she was like, go get your glutes worked out at physical therapy and get PRP in your ankle and you'll be fine. And I was like, first of all- You know it's nothing like, about me or this situation. It's yeah. PRP thousands of dollars. Like, do you want to pay for it? One. Um, two, uh, <laughs> don't know if it's going to work for this. Three, like I think ligaments are stretched. I don't know that PRP is going to magically fix that. Three, I do work on my glutes in physical therapy uh, twice a week and at home on the other nights doing my exercises for my pelvis to begin with. So yeah, that's just um, working yeah. on my hand. I, I would, I, but I was like, I have the urge to tell this person to F off. And I was like, okay, just reply later. It's fine, you don't have to reply right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And again, they're, they think they're helping. They, they do. They think they they're helping, but now toxic. suddenly toxic. in those moments, it carries like a bit of stress. Like you now owe it to them to compete at nationals or something. And you're like, why are you even a consideration in my thought process here? Like I've often experienced that. <laughs> oh my God, Jonathan, like, do you realize like, so a couple weeks ago, when I first tried on my Matthew Caron costume, I didn't pull the pants high enough and it wasn't flattering in like the love handle region, right? And it just looked like a little, you know, I had like a total like, moment okay yeah uh, yeah i can like imagine. an hour and a half and i said to matthew i was like i think i look fat in this part and and then he just like drew a line where like you have to put the pants up and the next day i was like oh my god is he gonna think that i'm like really dramatic because like you know <laughs> well how would you know he, you're trying to make the costume look i was like i imagine you. like a tessa virtue type has like cried over her arms looking fat or something like i don't mean tessa exactly i mean that like that high yeah, level that a skater at a high level would be and i was like oh my god you don't know what kind of like ego you're going to get in skating so i remember being like oh my god like i don't know matthew that well like is he going to be that kind of person like how dare you think my design makes you look fat and i was like <laughs> writing to him <laughs> i was like the next day i was like oh my god maybe i need to apologize to him that like i even uttered the word like that next to like his creation and it was like 
And like he laughed and he was like, no, you're fine. <laughs> like, Yeah, again, knowing like the intensity he must face from skaters and their mothers and all this sort of stuff. I'm sure you were fine. I'm he was sure. like, you just need to pull them up. But since that time, like I cut everything out of my diet. Like I have been like, <laughs> I bought the massage gun. I have been going to bed at nine o'clock at 9.30 to get up in the morning to skate at six. Like, oh my God. But yeah, that's intense. It is what it is. It is what yeah. It is. And it's not a lost. You became that much of a better skater during all this time. Do you know what I mean? Like there's there's always big pictures that can transcend a moment. Yes. Even though it seems hard clearly for some skating mothers to understand that in the moment. I mean, Galena didn't hit me with her heel with like the she didn't hit my heel this time. She did go, "We skate today." And I was like, "No. No. No. No." no. <laughs> I do notice good. that like also when you get injured in the ice rink like we, we were warming up I do notice that like everyone has a vibe where like they pretend to like not see and like also see but I think no mm. one wants to get themselves out either it's just like a strange situation well and I would I would almost want to like just be alone well, yeah, I feel like I need to probably you're like, already don't... in public space yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you just see people actively trying to not look but look but not look it's very awkward so yeah yeah yikes dave i'm just sorry are you it's in pain right. at the moment what no sorry are you in pain at the moment well like when i try to walk like you know but not like it's fine okay. um but uh it's actually the inside hurts more than the outside even though they're okay. both are bruised so it's, it's okay like, that's what it is i went got my trucks of a zine uh, you know and I can't find it at most pharmacies. Like, why do only Russian pharmacies carry trucks of Azean? I don't know. I'll be back to getting my Paula Abdul uh, Voltaren. Like, you. Okay. okay. I just love the Paula Abdul Voltaren commercials where she's like, Voltaren allows me to have the joy of movement. And I was like, it's literally an arthritis cream, Jonathan, so that like you can move. <laughs> Okay, so that I don't feel like a hobbled old dog. Okay. Amazing, amazing. I'm so old. You can't really tell because I have the beard. Kids used to tease me and call me Paula Abdul because I have a similar mole. To oh, to like Cindy yeah. Crawford. Okay. So I could, yeah, I, no one was calling me Cindy Crawford, but they were calling me Paula Abdul. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. So I did like one of my favorite quotes for when someone gets injured is from this uh, documentary. It's, it's, it's actually called Gymnast. It's about the British team, about the 2008 Olympics. One of the girls that they follow who like barely makes the team by the skin of her teeth. Uh, I think she herniates her disc, her, the, mm. like one of her discs in training, it sounds like, and it popped out. And like, so she has to pull out the Olympics. And the guy who's like this like fat Romanian, like grizzly bear of a man goes up to her and he goes, Laura, Life is a beach and round. No one has only good times. <laughs> it's just like, but that- you know, I feel comforted. <laughs> I kind no. of do in a weird way. What else are you gonna say to someone when you have to like kick them off of the Olympic team? And he goes to her and he goes, life's a beach and round. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, you know what? At least he was honest, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't tell her. You know what I might do in that moment? Be more of a listener. <laughs> Maybe try to be more of a listener to the person in the moment than telling them how they should feel. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there, yeah. Well, yeah. But it well, was, it's just so yeah. funny the way he says it. And you're just like, because obviously everyone's acting like it's a funeral, but they're trying to act like it's not a funeral. Right. I think the one thing they're always trying to avoid is she was like around other gymnasts that are, you don't want a scene. You don't want a commotion. You don't want a scene. You, you be very calm about whatever happens. So, yeah. And then the girl can go on NBC for the next 40 years talking about when she got injured on her way to the Olympics and her life was over. Yeah. And it's always going to be painted as she would have won the gold. That's how I find like these fluff pieces go, you know, on her way to be a metal contender. And you're like, those of us in the know were like, mm, is that really true? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not that it would make it any less devastating, of course, but. Yeah. 
sometimes it is, and sometimes, you know, sometimes they are a metal contender. The yeah. British were in 2008, but anyway, it's a great documentary, so. But I even thought that as they were phrased, um, sort of framing the Mariah Nagasu mental health interview we were talking about last time, they really did present her in the interview like she was a medal contender for the ladies individual event. And I no, thought- but I've gotten from Mariah since then that she felt like a medal contender. Well, and you know what, props to you because even if you were skating to try to be eighth instead of 10th like i think you have to believe you could pull something off yes but um and when you're again fourth, then and you're an up-and-comer to even make the olympics you have to believe that you can do really well right yeah we as viewers as commentators as fans as anyone else like we watch and we knew that there were like three or four skaters who were really locked in for those spots and it was everyone right. else Right. She was that young and up and coming talent. And Joanne did not have like the free skate of her life. She did have the, like a short program of her life. So I, I personally don't think that Mariah was in a place. Oh, see, point. I felt in the interview, they framed it as she was a medal contender in 2018 for the individual thing. That's I mean, how I saw them work. Well, Jonathan, the, Vancouver was a totally different story. The person who was watching it was just was a big fan, right? And at the same time, Mariah did land the triple axel. There's a lot of excitement about that. She got great scores in the team event. The team event does score high. You never know what can happen. No. I don't think Mariah was really a medal contender. And I think that's some of what happened between the individual event. I would have liked to have more questions about, did you feel that you weren't allowed, you, you weren't going to metal in the individual and was that hard after you do because i think that that's something that's going to become a real factor for so many um well the, our first our first introduction to it i felt was how about the kinerums the kinerums skated in the olymp in the team event they won a medal going into the individual didn't replicate that success right. kind of knowing that was the big moment. Of the moment life. was gone. It's yeah, gonna be exactly. hard to get up again. And I think that that's yeah. one of the things where you could have, you know, some people have talked about having the team event later. You know, of course gymnastics is at first, but yeah, I think that that has to be- I hard. think later would behoove a lot of people, but then you're gonna get a whole bag of stuff, but someone like- but There's a lot of stuff it's later too. Like there could, yeah. be, there could be negatives to maybe to that. I think for some people it's a great warm up, So it's fabulous if you can like, get the nerves out of the Olympics before it like really counts. Like say you're on a team like Italy and let's say that you were a Carolina Costner and you're going to do the short program and someone else is going to do the free. Like in Sochi, that has to be ideal for her. You can go in there, skate a short program, feeling like Olympic pressure, but not a thousand times Olympic pressure, but then you already feel like you're in the moment at the Olympics, right. you felt the arena, you've skated in the arena you've gotten your bearings and you already know that you've done it once and you've like had this success. And sometimes it can be easier with a team for some people, for some people it's harder, but in that kind of situation, it's ideal for right. Aliona Savchenko. Like you're doing a team short program. You know, I think that there are different cases for different people, but I think- But Yulia Litnitskaya, for instance, like that would be my fear is that like, as a performer, I would like give it all and then be like, oh my God, I accidentally blew it. You know well, what I mean? I gave I think, everything like, she I She gave it all and became like the Nadia Comaneci of the Olympics for right. the first week. Yeah. With that iconic image of her. And right. then you have to try to replicate it. And you're at a home Olympics. Right. You know, kind of like when Dominic Mochano was injured in Atlanta and she didn't have all the training going into it. You know, her first seven events were like really good, especially the first three in the team optionals. And at a certain point, that lack of training and that lack of confidence caught up to her. And then she just couldn't replicate it in the individual after the highs and the lows and the emotion and all of that. So, I mean, the Olympics are such a mental and emotional event that I think it's what makes them so exciting. And mm. I mean, how many times do we see Dan Jansen like bomb and then he wins? But imagine right. if you win, <laughs> you bomb right. the rest, right? Right. 
I right. think for Mirai, it was such a unique situation where that triple axel really catapulted her and motivated her and making those Olympics. And she had the storyline going into there and Ashley didn't look so great. And Gracie had her meltdown at the same time. So Mariah looked even better than she, right. and she was skating great and on, but like, right. let's say she was like, let's say the team was like, Ashley, Gracie and Mariah, and Mariah has the triple axel. She's going in as like the third girl, you're doing a triple axel, like it's exciting. But I think she became such a bigger part of those games. The other two stars weren't there. She is a returning Olympian with the triple axel and a veteran, and she's doing the team event and da da da. And she didn't make the team last time, even though she was, she had all this stuff for her. But I also yeah. think with what we say about Tom Z versus other coaches, would a coach like Marie France or would a coach like Frank Carroll or someone who's a veteran of the Olympics and so many events have potentially managed that situation better. And mm -hmm. I wonder what did a Terry learn from what happened with Yulia Lipnitskaya and how- She brought her home, right? She took her out of Sochi in between the team I events. I forget, and but, the... but remember- no, I think that was did. because at first remember I thought did. it was a great idea. I think it can be, some people have, you know, but remember some, but she did the short and long. Notice that they split the <laughs> skaters. They could have split them in 2014, theoretically. Right. right. If Lozier and Trankov wanted to do both, like they could have split it or done it different ways and notice that they did. So you kind of wonder as the coach, when they get more experience, how do you calculate that? How do you handle that? I think for Mariah, it was, look, it was the confluence of a number of things happening. For this girl to win an Olympic medal <laughs> and to, like land the triple axel in that moment. And it like secured the medal for the team or potential, you know, it's just the way it all crumbled. It's understandable that it felt like the finale to her career right there. And then it's like, and then you have this other event. How do you get right. up for that? You know, right. you know, you know. Right, right. <laughs> well, it was like the Plushenko and Sochi moment. You're like, you had your big moment. You. I don't know how the hell you landed that quad. Mm -hmm. Call it. Don't even try the individual event. Yeah. But maybe you also, I think, I think the hard thing is if you did land the triple axel and then you feel like everyone expects you to do it again and you know the fact that what it took you to do in one competition. I think right. mentally it has to be very, very hard. Yeah. It could also catapult you, like it catapulted Adam to like the best event of his life but he still had a shorter period of time in between the events that he had to. Compete. And was not trying this like lofty technical element that was getting yeah. a lot of hype and pressure around it. Yeah. So, so the good so. thing about adult nationals next year is that if, when people do the, okay, so there are two routes of adult nationals. Anyone can sign up to compete in silver and above, right? But if you compete at sectionals and you place, you know, like on the podium, you can compete in the championship event. So, and that's for people that like qualify like the traditional way of how nationals was, although it's not gonna be it this year, they're doing those, all those other competitions, but you would compete in, uh, you would compete at the championship silver event if you were a medal winner at sectionals. And then there's also like an open event. Many people use the open event as the practice. Okay. So, you could still like win a gold medal at nationals. You're not technically a national champion because you didn't do it in the championship event, but many people that are competing in the championship event use that other event as like a practice and mm. don't put as much pressure on themselves. And they like use it as a warm up, like a first pancake or something. So I think like that's an interesting thing too. Obviously you wouldn't want to like skate the moment of your life earlier in the week and then bomb later in the week. Yeah. So. But it's such a mind game, so much of yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Even I have to say, like, I have always marveled at Broadway performers doing the same damn show all the time. Yeah. Because at some point that, that adrenaline, that enthusiasm about the new thing goes away. So even just sort of like, having completely- Luckily having many of them don't seem that smart, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Or, or, or quite honestly, 
don't seem to care that they're not bringing a lot of energy. Like the last couple of Broadway shows that weren't like premiere. New I was runs, kidding. A lot of them do seem very smart. Yes, I know you're joking. I know, but like you do see somewhere you're like, wow, everybody's phoning in the energy on this one. You know, when I saw Chicago on Broadway, I, I was like, does anyone care? That I would have to move. Like I would always think about. So we were talking in band about this once that there was, you know, someone that plays in the orchestra pit for say the Lion King. Someone like that may understand that the gig that they got is so freaking great in terms of pay and exposure. And in a show like that, that could go on forever. Some of them play the same score night after night, after night, after night, after night, because they don't want to give up their job and their so the security. Yeah. 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 And they, I think I would go insane. And they are not rewarding orchestral parts. That's not the point of a show like The Lion King. Yes, yeah. because of the nuanced instrumentation of the orchestra. You know, so that would be I mean, I would be working me. my connections to be like, please, can you put me in Godspell? But then what if that show closes, right? Like, yeah, what if right. you, and then you're like, I was such an idiot. I had this show forever that I yeah. could have done. And yeah. Then you become Shelley Long leading Cheers, okay? And you could have... <laughs> True Beverly Hills didn't cut it. Neither did that movie with it Ben It did, Hill. it just didn't. It could only go so far. I did love True we Beverly Hills. We all saw the Shelley Long and the Cheers, each True Hollywood story. I mean, like, she looks like the biggest uh, <laughs> idiot. Like, even I remember my yeah. parents telling me that story as a kid. Like, all these people think they're going to be such movie stars and they leave the show and nothing happens. And then yeah. the world moves on without you. So Right. That's why I look at the friends, okay? They all, we were talking about this, I was talking about this to someone today. So much Botox, oh my God. Looking at that poster, you're like, oh. God. I watched it twice. Okay. Matt and Perry looks the worst. Ross has some Botox in Cornea. Jennifer, they all, it, it looks so over. Jennifer looks so good, Jonathan, okay? Okay. And like some of it is her natural bouncy hair, but think about it. Like how are those girls able to get along so well? I think it's because Jennifer Aniston didn't demand more money. Mm. I think the fact that they all have had the same salary is what really kept it. Because as well, they used to started, call those um, was it One Nation's contracts? Favorite Nation clauses. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I remember the movie Clue, which is my favorite movie. Um, I worked with the guy who wrote it, and he was like, everyone was paid the same every single person in that thing and they were paid like almost nothing but he was like that was the only way to keep everybody even stevens like having no problems well think about and it no right. one left the friends cast and if you would have lost one of them right it would not have worked right right so look at bewitched no, just... <laughs> old darren new darren yeah exactly so yeah and in sad news evie scaffold did pass away um this week so very very sad um, yeah and i hope that like then maybe next year at nationals or something they'll have a big i mean sort of tribute hopefully they'll sort. interview mary i mean come on yeah exactly the greatest interviews in any skating documentary the scott hands down hands yeah. down. see an evy scott Bold sit there and all again, as we discussed, all the Sandy Lens, like little side comments in the <sighs> 80s, you know, go watch those kiss and cry moments. They're quite excellent. Is he being buried in his tan overcoat? Does anyone know? All right. Amazing. Amazing. Legend. Okay. Just an absolutely bear of a man, like fabulous. Okay. Seem to have taught a really fierce Lutz technique. Yes. The closest Lutz man we had to Mishan, I guess, over here was Evie Scottfold. Uh, Frank teaches a good Lutz, I think, yeah. Yeah. I think that, the, I think that he, Evie has a very old school Lutz with that long core, I love it, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. But uh, yeah, it, he's, um, and I posted Nancy Carrick, so Ann Jensen was getting rid of her skating videos. And she posted on Facebook, like, does anyone want them? And I was like, Anne, really? Why would you not just send them to me directly? Yeah. So I paid to convert them, you know. Okay. And I mean, she wouldn't let me take every tape. Was like, she was like, yeah, that's ridiculous. You have some of these. So I was like, all right. Um, 
I posted Nancy Kerrigan 1981 to 1989. Jonathan, you didn't know that you needed to see it. You didn't know. I didn't know that I needed to see it, but okay. Nancy is an I've intermediate. I've seen some of her 87, 88 stuff, but okay. No, no, no. Have you seen Nancy Kerrigan do pairs with Bobby Martin? No. Bobby Martin of like Bobby who coached Marissa and Simon, like, okay. It's like the greatest part of the tape because they're in these like teal blue and white, like very 70s, 80s kind of like jumpsuit Scott Hamilton, like speed skating kind of costumes. Okay. And they're skating to Swan Lake. It makes zero sense. Yeah, it should be zero. Like driving they're music. certainly not yeah. going for the Swan Lake arms. Nancy's not going like this, okay? okay. Like, none of that okay. is happening. And you just need to like really luxuriate in like the journey of Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> okay, yeah, I wanna check it out. All right. We just, there's just so much. The only pairs of course I remember is her with Paul doing like token Miss Saigon. Excuse and me, she did the yeah. throw Axel with Bobby Martin yeah. first. And he, I feel he doesn't get enough credit. All he right? doesn't until today. You know, I feel like I knew that she skated with Bobby Martin, forgot it. And like okay. we learned this information today. Okay. I feel like I did know this and it just like was like, eh, eh, eh. no way. We don't hear about this enough. Okay. You know, <laughs> they're like close to the same height. All right. In there. Well, well, yeah. I mean, she would have always been tall for a pure skater. You know, and sure. I don't really know who was the stem and who was the flower. Nancy was <laughs> a little shy back then. So. Okay. Okay. But like younger Nancy had a little bit of flair when she came out. Okay. Like Nancy was like a smiley girl as like a younger one. And that was even before the veneers. Yes. Yeah, oh. okay. Like. I, I hated that they always mentioned that. Like that, was that like world champions on ice or something? Mm -hmm. They fixed Sorry. her teeth and she had confidence or something. And you're like. <laughs> she had one of the greatest glow ups of all time. Yeah. <laughs> when she got the teeth, she got the Vera Wang dresses and like, come on. Yeah. They <laughs> glammed her up so well. And you yeah. know what? That's what skating's about. <laughs> I was like, I don't have enough time because I have no time in the world to go to- To glow up. <laughs> to go to the dentist before uh, adult nationals for teeth whitening. I was doing baking soda and peroxide. Peroxide and water- school. Spray. Old okay. school, okay? <laughs> Don't even. Nancy, yeah. They had a sponsor pay for her veneers. I mean, and even was in the that sponsor a homosexual? We gotta know, okay? Like, someone told Maybe me- not enough. Gay Be man paid for Svetlana Boginskaya's veneers after the 92 Olympics. And you know what? That was God's work, okay? Okay. <laughs> Just like that, that fan who digitally photoshopped my picture to tell me to wear a concealer because he thought that I looked tired in a show after Worlds. Oh. Yes, and he sent it to me. Okay. And your thoughts? I screen recorded it and then we played it on Sea Alive and everyone saw my reaction to like- Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, I was Thanks. exhausted. Yeah. I was exhausted. Okay. Amazing. Nothing to conceal. You're letting it all out, Dave. We did a lot of shows. Yeah. A lot. That was this year? Yes. We did like 8,000 hours of footage. And I did to see your lives. Two so days. Yeah, I don't know how remember. you found the time to do all that. We did all the shows. We did like each discipline. Which also means, by the way, we have to watch them all also. Right. Yeah. And I did to see your lives. And then I, and then we, and then people were like, well, I want your opinion. Cause maybe they didn't like what Alex said. Once Alex said the thing about Karen Chen's music, I knew we were- I know, I know, we knew it. We, we knew it was going to be someone at some never point. never knew a Russian say an inappropriate comment before. Like, have you never been in skating? Have you never met them? Let me tell you, you hear right. much worse in the skating rink every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We lost the Canadians with Renee. Listen, <laughs> my first, lesson with Galena, she goes, you have a very nice body. Why you look handicapped? <laughs> she didn't like, like, I don't know why you're trying to make me handicapped at this point, like Jesus. <laughs> Crazy.
I love that she's like, it's the shoe. Oh, no, it's not the shoes. I love <laughs> Even she had to admit it wasn't the shoes this time. Oh my God. You know what? I got the biggest compliment from her the other day. Which, first of all, she told me that I looked dry. I did an interview with Adam where he said that his Russian trainer, Dennis, told him that you want to look dry. Like all the water is squeezed out of you before you compete. <laughs> And then I remember they were talking about eating dry too. I remember him and Ashley saying that they had a nutritionist that was like, eat dry, dry. And I was like, oh. That she went, she went, you look dry. And then we skated and I skated my program and she was like, you skated. Okay. Now she's usually very dramatic and everything is very terrible. So I was like, this okay. is a win. This is a win. This is a win. Yeah. Going okay. through it, you know. All right. We're going like this. We're going like <laughs> Okay. Listen, like you skate with someone like that intimidating, it has made me like ready to go. Like I I saw Victor from my jumps and I was not as nervous because like he's not that how scared. could he be? Yeah, how could he induce the same nerves? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. A kitten. A kitten. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny well when i first started working with him i was intimidated by that okay well, of course yeah you want to see someone like that look at your jumps you're like oh, i mean sorry <laughs> 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 so, you know yeah but no it, it was just like interesting like the improvement does work so yeah having totally. someone like that but anyway but okay. speaking of jumps dave Okay. Now I was about to take my own transition, but where were you about to go? Well, no, I was about to go to the harness video you sent me. I know. What is Mariah doing? We need to know. She needs to let us know of whether or not she's toying. Is she toying and then maybe she'll come back? I did see she was in the show in Aston a couple of weeks ago, like any skating show. They had to have a theme. Of course, the theme was horrifying. Right. It was the circus. They had Gracie Gold skate to circus. And you know what, Jonathan? I thought that this was inappropriate, okay? Maybe I'm one of the only people to remember that like the circus album that Britney did was her comeback album from her mental health crisis. And then you have Gracie skate. That's a little on the nose, okay? Yeah, right. Yeah. After, well, the only more thing on the nose than she used to be mine. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, apparently she did Gracie did a great triple lutz and triple toe in one of the shows, but in the other two shows that were posted, which I bought the thing for, because I'm like, oh my God, I'll see if she did the lutz and then we can post it as like a good thing. But what worries me about Gracie is that physically she looks phenomenal. She looks as strong as she's ever looked. She looks healthy, strong, fit. But in the two shows that I saw, she popped the first, the first triple lutz and did a double and then just let the rest of the program go and did Instead of doing the triple toe, she did the double toe. Right. So that makes me think like, no matter- More what, of the same, more of the same. Well, she, okay. So even like she looks better, but she doesn't have that fighter mentality. You know, Gracie's biggest thing in her career has always been is when she makes one mistake, she doesn't fight back and lets the rest go. So I feel like that's still kind of inherently in there that she is trying to come back She's trying to put herself out there. She's gonna go for the triple lutz. She pops it and she doesn't fight like hell for the triple toe. Right. So obviously it's still a confidence thing, but you just wonder like, is there enough time to undo that? Like you could right. teach someone technique. You could teach someone, you know, a lot. But was the issue ever really the technique? I mean, I think we know that. Well, I think that there were changes to her technique. Maybe with Alex, her arms would get a little wild and then sometimes she would pop the jump because the arms are in the wrong place, something like that. But, you know, you just, you just wonder like, can you fix that? Even if physically, I think she's the best girl in the country still. So yeah. Mariah was in the show. Mariah did a couple of triple toes. She looked good. Obviously she's not putting on triple lots, but like the triple toes look. And then good. try to quad toe in a harness. It wasn't around, but. No, I've never, I, I, I was surprised, like, especially with the assistance that can be had with a harness, that maybe yeah, that person didn't there. assist her a little bit more. Yeah. You know what the funny thing is that Mariah's getting good at Instagram. 
she's knowing how to get those followers, right? She doesn't have a team behind her like Ashley Wagner, who has the same people that run Ashley Wagner's Instagram account run Nastia's, which is why they're kind of similar. Okay. Uh, that's like a team. I looked that up. I was like, okay. why are they on the same vacations? And like all the comments and who even knows if they're really doing them or if their team is right. posting them, right? And Nastia's Instagram is a cringe. <laughs> okay. That is okay. cringe of narcissistic horrors. Okay. Love her the most. Okay. <laughs> oh. okay. Okay. Um, Mariah will be like doing like a triple double double and it'll be like stop Asian hate below. But she combines like a training video for fans to get excited with like stop Asian hate in the middle of it. They don't seem to really go together, but you know what? She's getting- You're going to like it for one reason or the other. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know what? I've seen gay men who will be like, posting in a half naked speedo and be like, watch my show tonight. See, I got your attention. So you know what? Mariah's doing the skating version of that. It's true. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. It's the guy Emerson that does this show with that guy Dell who uh, produced Sorted Lives. I don't know if anyone knows who they are, anyway. So he's actually a really nice guy, Emerson, but he posts, it. anyway, it's- um, it's that time of year, the thirsty photos have been like in abundance, which I can't say I dislike. But he uses it to get aware. people yeah. attention to watch their show on YouTube. Yeah, and okay. <laughs> so, it's so true though, that it does get people's attention. So Mariah is posting like, but I did notice, okay. Mariah did a triple double double the other day on Instagram. The triple was absolutely gorgeous. And in Mariah fashion, I was like, were those doubles on the queue? <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else have that reaction? Did anyone okay. else look to see if the double? And does anyone else admit that you're looking for it even before she does it? Because one just maybe anticipates. It's just like a little questionable. No. It's just like the story of her career. No. But the triple looked good. She looks good. You just wonder like. And she did a very like poignant caption about reclaiming a relationship with skating and she's getting all this love for it. Jonathan, she's stuff. doing the most right now, okay? Yeah, she's yeah, Not, she's looking for something. She took over the Jackie Wong podcast. I haven't listened to it. I don't know if it's like good or not. And I, I, know, I never see it advertised. I never see her, uh, her post promote it. promote it, so. Yeah, yeah, and yet we have listened to Paulina's. Listen. So let that say something, <laughs> like. <laughs> Paulina started her podcast by kvetching for like six episodes about any time she thought she was wronged. Right. And whether it was delusional or not, we all listened, all right? Mm -hmm. Then she started doing interviews that were actually quite good and there was a big improvement. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think she's, on, I think Paulina is on the right track. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but. <laughs> The Mirai, is she going to compete? Is she not? Why not? Throw yourself into the ring. At the, but now we, maybe she knows what she's competing against because now she knows Mariah's doing Chromatica and Joni Mitchell. I think at the very least, if Canada somehow has this Stars on Ice tour in October, she's certainly going to have to get that. It was like Stars on Ice without any stars. When I look, do you remember that episode of of um, the Real Housewives of Atlanta when Sheree was going to have a fashion show, but she by Sheree wasn't ready. And Nini's friend is like, a fashion show without any fashions. How dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking at the stars on ice. No Patrick, no Tessa and Scott, no Ashley Wagner. Mm. And they have to use all pros. And I was like, stars on ice without any stars. <laughs> Well, that's been Dancing with the Stars for many seasons. <laughs> Excuse me. Dancing There's with the Stars has people who are somewhat relevant. And for the early seasons of the show, we got to see the Huffs. We got to see Cheryl Burke with the sides cut out, doing the cha-cha. Yeah, yeah. but half the time I watch pop. that show, I, and I know I'm not like super into all the, the pop things they pull from, you but a lot of- a bad attitude when we had to watch that show for Adam and we're just so like, well, because half of them, I'm like, who are these people? Like, and at least in that one, we had Adam, Mariah, and Tanya. The fact that there were three skaters in 
one season at least made it much more interesting to me. I don't even I don't know. Remember. Meryl was on this, wasn't Meryl on a season with like Winnie Cooper? I mean, come on, my favorite things combined. The Wonder Years, one of my favorite shows ever, wanted okay. Kevin and Winnie to get together as a kid so badly. And that was like one of those series and they don't end up together and you're like gutted. But as an adult, I'm like, that's kind of perfect because that's real. Yeah, there you go. And I look back and I was like, you know, she was never that interesting and she was never that nice to him. You know, as a kid, something about that show, I hated that show. What? Yeah, I, like it would come on and something about it was like gritty and I just didn't like it. I it and it came it. on after something I would watch. I don't remember what it came on after. I like used to watch America's like, Funniest Home Videos. Yeah, I'm like, didn't know if I loved it or hated it, but I always thought it was interesting. And it's like a little, but once I hit like sixth grade and it started to be on Nick at Night, I was like, this is the greatest show I've ever seen. My favorite episode is when he breaks up with Becky Slater and she punches him in the nuts <laughs> and like, and he goes skating with Becky Slater on their date in the previous episode. Oh, yes. And it's like, that, so that's how they could have gotten me. I never saw that. You know, I love, I love 60s music. I have all, oh yes. Okay. The whole thing. And you know, do you know who Becky Slater really was? Winnie Cooper's younger sister in real life. Yes. They liked to do that back in that era. And yeah. I love Boy Meets World as well, which is his brother. Okay. Yes. I even loved his sitcom that was called like Working. And I only remember it being good when I was in like sixth or seventh grade. So I don't know if it was actually a terrible show and I just liked it because Fred Savage was in it. Maybe I thought he was cute or something or just liked that he was in the Wonder Years. Really? <laughs> okay. It was like kind of like a Dilbert, and like a early version of The Office. It probably like wasn't, it probably was terrible. All right. It was probably okay. <laughs> ahead of its time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did anyone watch it? I also, at that age, I loved when they tried to like reboot the Ellison twins in two of a kind. And you know what? If anyone else watched it, they'll be like, yes, queen. Yes. All right. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Let's talk about Mariah Bell. All right, Jonathan. I want to know all of you. We haven't talked about this. And I have like have strong feelings. And I'm going to try not to get myself in trouble. Mariah Bell is skating to Chromatica by Lady Gaga, choreographed by Cordero Zuckerman, who's did Ollie Fox and RuPaul's Drag Race. There are a lot of people who are very excited. There are other people that have said things like quietly in the background. Talk out your feelings and then I will tell mine. I have a couple of thoughts that are rather strong. And this was, this was, um, RuPaul's Drag Race is not something I have watched in the past. And I did give this season like a start to finish. Oh, you did? I did. And I, I would start to finish with my friends with the Bianca Del Rio season. Okay. And there's something about a, like um, a sort of a snarky drag queen sense of humor that is reminiscent of those like old Joan Riversy kind of things, yes. those old Betty White roasty kind of things. So in part, I, I do enjoy some of it. So it definitely held my interest. That character in particular held my interest the least and they didn't really play the skating thing, but they kind of played the skating thing. She kind of danced, but she didn't kind of. So he, at first I thought, okay, this reminds me of Adam deciding to go all in with the gay community going into 2018. After years of sort of like not wanting to go that route, decided to lean into it. So we know that Mariah's toyed with leaning into it, you know, with certain sort of pop numbers, but this seems a very Did much- really lean into it because she skated to Britney? Well, or she started yeah, to play around with the club vibe. One thing. I love Mariah Bell. She is so white, she makes Jenny Kirk look ethnic. All right, I'm just telling you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean, I'm Jonathan, let's be honest. Her sister was a princess in Frozen on Disney on Ice. Like, they are so white. They are like... And, and, and something even about the Britney scene that Little put on, it seemed like Adam's take put on. Do she you didn't... think Adam is playing? Okay, when I read the article, my first, I read the article, I didn't know if I was laughing, rolling my eyes, cringing, vomit, like all of the feelings at once. Like, is someone going to be doing it with- And a lot of people love Gaga and they're excited and I get it. And I have a couple of thoughts. On one hand, I think, look, you know how Michelle Kwan 
skated to Salome and they just changed the track and it was Taj Mahal. <laughs> it was the same theme, right? I literally think they looked at 2020 and they were like, that was Mariah's best nationals of her entire life. Best season. Let's just change the track, same theme for the short and long, all right? I think she's gonna skate the same fricking free skate that was Hallelujah, which was the most generic, say, probably the same choreography as her East of Eden. I mean, I can't remember a step. I know that there was a spot. And it was generic, but it was generically lovely. Generically it really lovely. was lovely, yeah. 7.5, Tyra, Tyra Banks would be like, she's the girl that Tyra would have said, you're resting on being pretty. I think Mariah's resting on being a girl who's like a little bit old to be cute and like kind of pretty, right? She's like in between cute and pretty, right? And that's kind of how her skating is. It's in between cute and pretty. It's not that lyrical. It's not that Ashley Wagner showgirl. It's never had it's an honest personality. That's why like, I remember La at one point asked me what music I would choose for her. And I was like, I want whatever music like gets her out of her shell instead of her being directed to do something. And I she's think a even a great Ashley Wagner. And we like her, yeah. right? We yeah. like her. She's a second rate Ashley Wagner, a little bit stiff and reminiscent of Nancy Kerrigan in that way, but like she's in that genre, right? She's kind of like the Patty Simcox of the skating world. You know, she's like a little cheerleadery, a little student body president. When they start talking about Mariah Bell talking about black trans lives, I was like, what? Does Mariah Bell, how many episodes of Pose do you think this girl has seen, Jonathan? Mm, did she mm. actually watched it or did she just put it in her queue because Adam told her to watch? I think he is crafting a persona. And, and it, it has crafting saying, all over it. He yeah. is strategizing because I don't think Raphael pays her the time of day because she can't do a triple axel or quad. I think he's taking all of her money. But I think Adam is, and Adam's going to be there for the kiss and cry. NBC is going to put him on. And they're going to want him at the Olympics coaching her. And I think they are just getting, they're like trying to polish it up. She's not going to do anything too hard. They're going to make the program consistent. They're going to make sure she's more confident than last year because she won't have any pressure of being the favorite. She's not going to win. And I think that they're just going to make her consistent and kind of like the likable one that can like- Or the one that like a gay community is going to respond to or something. Well, we need someone on this Olympic team who can give an interview. We have Karen at the last Olympics who's saying <laughs> boots are a freaking mess. We have Brady who has, I don't know, the personality of like, we don't know her. Of we something with not a lot of personality, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, there, so in one, in one hand, it's genius, right? What Adam is doing, but it's so deliberately put on. <laughs> Mariah's like, you know, as a well-known ally of the gay community. And I was like, I mean, you have gay friends, but like- Listen, I, but has you she know been what? To Pride? I don't know if she's been to Pride. It just- But if she's so a vehicle for that, oh, who could argue? Who could argue that having a vehicle for that kind of message would be a bad thing? I mean, like, I don't think, I think she's it's not. I don't think she's not an ally, but I was like- Yeah. The way it was written in the quote, I was like- Yeah. What? Like Ashley, Ashley attempted to angle that also with some of her pre Sochi comments, but it never kind of ran away with the thing. In the same way, Adam tried something with that Mike Pence stuff, and it and he regretted it and immediately circled back. I don't think he regretted it. I don't oh, he do you remember he kept trying to be like, I don't want to. That's not my sound clip for, or my sound oh, bite. Got of attention. That was what it was really about. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, the thing that I noticed is you never noticed that when Ashley was hanging out with Adam all the time, she was like this sassy girl in skating who had edge in these programs. The second she stopped hanging out with Adam and moved to Boston. She became the most boring white girl who's just like sad all the time and wants to like think about her hair and her pastel. It was literally like she wore bold colors when she was around Adam, had a different hair color every week that they both had like these outrageous looks. And then she became like this pastel girl when she's in Boston, who's like journaling and like looking at latte art. Yeah. And you're like, you were so much more interesting before. And now you just seem kind of like, Sad. I don't know. Like, mm, mm. and like some of that, I think, is the team that manages her Instagram. But some of it, I was like, did Adam craft Ashley's persona? And Adam played the role of the sidekick until he became the star and like kicked her to the curb, you know, 
in many respects. Adam is interesting is that he went from playing the Andy Cohen type when he was the skater. And then as soon as he got famous and like got to like, you know what happened is that he had a skating agent at IMG and then they merged and he got with like the higher level agents. And it seemed like they tried to shape his image and they took him from the Andy Cohen and made him like the Anderson Cooper. And mm. now he's like talking about like more sophisticated things and they matured him. But then the other thing that's weird about Adam is that he hasn't really seemed to want to skate since, but he's known for the skating, right? right? And it seems like he wants to transition into TV and media, but at the same time, you are known for the skating and you became famous off of skating and your quotes, but all of it together. Why wouldn't Stars on Ice like kind of feature Adam as like the people's performer when they tour and try to get some people in the seats because they remember him. Right. It's like you take away someone's superpower. Right. But then he, but he even said that he didn't want to be known for the skating. And he, remember he gave those quotes that, that he wants it to be like in 20 years that people are like, oh, he skated. That's like Bethany Frankel saying she doesn't want to be known as a real housewife. It's like, what? Like, well, or like you were saying with Shelley Long. I mean, in, in a way it's its own Shelley Long conversation. Like what? Yeah. Like I have no I have no issue with Adam doing like skating and something else, but to like never skate again, aren't you also kind of like cutting down what made you famous in the first part? But also I think there's a big part of this is that we see all of these people in Adam's position, Mariah's position, Ashley's position, that when you retire, there are very clearly mixed feelings that a lot of people have with their I, relationship yeah, a little with famous sport. a little quick and like even his but then he like also wants to be a sophisticated person then he wants to be a comedian i mean brian moylan wrote his book who wrote the book about who wrote erica jane's book and wrote the housewives i mean i don't know if that's like public but they got him a good writer it's just it's interesting like they clearly made a lot of very smart moves but then to not skate it's like i like to see him skate then you have johnny who could still skate they don't put anyone <laughs> in Stars on Ice, who anyone actually knows, you know, right. Like, right. or who's going to be interesting for an audience. So yeah, and then wonders why the tours don't do well. Yeah, like you need yeah. someone who could go on a Today Show and be like, yeah, I'm in Stars on Ice, and like be interesting enough because right. Marilyn Farley don't give a great interview. I mean, they right. give a very polite, very polished, very professional interview, but not performative. Yeah, not performative. yeah. Right. And Adam can like riff with someone. I just think it's a missed opportunity, like to put someone. I agree. I'm saying I like him, but I, I would like to showcase him more. Yeah, yeah. Is that bad? I don't know. I feel no, like I think it I makes total sense. Any comments or Kelly Rapata is going to come for me, or someone's not going to understand what I said and think that I hate him. No, I, I think you're, you're putting it in good I terms. think he's going to get Mariah Bell to the Olympic Games on the basis of PR and a Christine Brennan article, okay? And <laughs> yeah, because it's interesting. She'll probably get a lot of attention. I think he'll train her enough reason. to be consistent enough that U.S. figure skating will cheat the hell for her and make sure she gets the mark she needs because that's how they roll, okay? Yeah, yeah. We're actually though, the, even though that the Lady Gaga was sort of like the whoa part of that announcement, I do think that Joni Mitchell makes total sense. Johnny, I think that, I think she will have her generically gonna, lovely moment with it. And they're gonna be like, oh, what a, what a great choice. Meanwhile, the rest of us who like actually watch the ice dance event are like, we literally just watched Piper and Spolsky to this for two years. Again, it's more, it's more derivative choice making. <laughs> yeah. and this like big long quote about like, you know, she's seen skatings from both sides now, Jonathan. She's had a good nationals and a bad national. I can't with these quotes, okay? Yeah, it's yeah. Literally the same music as Hallelujah. Like the same theme. The same right. Yeah, it's following the same formula. Yeah. Thank God you're not skating to ABBA again. All right, that's just what I thought. Yeah, the real theme of the article it's should have been speech anything speech but ABBA. Mariah Bell, okay? <laughs> it's like the skating equivalent of live, laugh, love. That's where she is. That's, th now you're with, now I'm with you. That is 100% the correct analysis to me. She is the live, laugh, love of skating. Yes. Yeah. She's uh, favorite favorite book, Eat, Pray, Love. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. And you know what? America will love her. Because they won't have known her. And so when they just basically seemingly meet her, they won't know the oh formula. Oh my God, Hoda will literally get Mariah Bell's sister to surprise her at the Olympics. Tears ensue, charming moment. Did you say ensue? <laughs> Jonathan. Because you know what, Dave? They're gonna have to work to make sure that's not a part of this narrative. Oh no, it will absolutely be a part of like the New York Times or Sports Illustrated. Exactly, or exactly. It will be a story of overcoming. Yeah. That actually makes her more interesting too. Totally. So anyway, I'm curious to see all these things happening. Like all those cogs working. Yeah. I saw Lindsay Kay- in practice. Okay. So there's one thing that I already know. So Kristen Frazier is like, she's kind of like us in law where she's like very kind of snarky. There's a part of Lindsay Thorngren's program where like there's audio and it goes like, I just want to be like the other, or it's either says, I wish I could be like the others, or I just want to be like the others. And Kristen turns to me and she goes, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea for someone who's trying to become in the top group. And I was like, that is going to be Jonathan's comment all season. <laughs> you just said it. Well, that was like when Ross Minor did Memories and we're like, Memories of that time you were on the podium. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like, she's skating to this powerful music. And then like, you know, like when dialogue comes in randomly and you're like, wait, what? What just, ha- yeah. what just happened? Okay. Yeah. And you look for it. You 100% look for it. Yeah. It's a Benoit moment. And speaking of Benoit, did you notice he's going to Monument? Yeah. This is his good friend, Eliona. Jonathan, have you heard the rumors and the rumblings? And I can't think that this is really happening. I just remember when Elena Betschke said that people just need to know when to retire. Right. Do you know when Tamara, how she like told her to retire when Elena was like having a moment and like wanted to compete for the 94 Olympics. And Tamara was probably like thinking like, Elena, you could never land your damn jumps and I'm not letting right. you. Right. So I wrote this down. On February 19th, TJ announced that he was skating with Bryn McIsaac. About a month ago, they split. Bryn is now looking for partners elsewhere. And allegedly, Delilah pulled what Delilah did best. Remember what she did to Caitlin Yankowskis when they were getting ready for 2011 Worlds and she rented ice late at night and he and Katie and John Coughlin and Katie Denny tried out behind Caitlin's back and everyone at the rink figured it out because these skaters all live with other skaters and people gossip and people talk. And he had the tryouts with Katie behind Caitlin's back and then he ended the partnership after Worlds. So allegedly, 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 Delilah had Bryn and TJ, TJ with all of that baggage. Right. Even that you could see so transparently from his music videos, which go watch before someone at US Figure Skating makes him take all those down. You know, where he has the girl uh, running around with the knife. Like, I don't know if that's like the kind of image that Mm -hmm. US Figure Skating wants to present. Um. And all the partners he goes through, never making it to competition. Is this the third one now? Right. And I think Benoit like probably is under the impression that it's like, it's a lot of nothing on there. But if you're getting paid $10,000 for a long program, you might have more of an incentive to believe that it's a lot of nothing. If you're- She tagged him, Delilah tagged um, Benoit in that post she made. Yeah. And, you know, he's really good friends with Aliona, who's even been stepping into it. And you got to think, like, is Aliona being smart like a fox? Because remember, Vanessa James was thinking of trying out with TJ when we interviewed him on CLive, Live. And then she found out about TJ and then didn't try out with him because of it. Mm, right. Think about how much just like the Vanessa and Eric announcement didn't go off the way they wanted. Right. So if this is like really true and they weren't just like skating around for fun, even her just coaching him is dirty. That is still like, and like getting into the Delilah of it all. And that's what we know publicly about Delilah with like the red hats in light of all the sex abuse survivors. And like, that is disgusting, right? Like that is really, and like to team up with her, like I even side, I miss Kachuk. Like, I'm like, 
really? And like, like I know that you have a daughter that's like in skating and like, I know that like there are all these pair camps have like such problematic behavior, but it's gross, right? Like yeah. it just film of like filth on it, right? Allegedly, my opinion, right? Yes. <laughs> like, is Aliona smart like a fox? Because she knows that they've got like Miss Kuchanek there and like her, and it's like, oh, maybe if that pair camp like staff falls apart in a year, I could like take it over. Or are you so willfully blind and going through a period of your life that you're like, oh, I'll hop in bed with this. This seems like a nice, innocent opportunity. I don't know. It's like Elion is so respective, right? And like such a symbol to so many people of like perseverance and like strength and everything. And it's like, Well, and it was interesting because if she was really interested, I thought she was opening a whole school. Like I thought all this stuff was happening. I wished for many reasons. We'll never know, I think fully what happened with Alexa and Chris, but that kind of concept for her to have under her wing, taken a team exactly like that and delivered results with a team like that would have put her in such good stead Obviously, for whatever reason, that didn't come to fruition with them. But I wish she had done that again with someone instead of because you think you think it appears that she's going to go work with this new partnership. Jonathan, it looks that way. There are rumors that she's even skating with him. I have to think that that's crazy. I have to think that there is no way. He is what, like a junior Grand Prix bronze medalist one time? Like he's not known as a strong lift. I've not quite underestimated like the hype around or why why the potential he's never and the hype as around. Is yeah. she like just maybe I like to think maybe she's just helping him develop some better pair of skills. Let's let's just Yeah, that she's such a lover of the craft. That she, she just loves sharing with it with him anyone. Teaching him to like skate better and be a better partner. We cannot believe that she is that she would really entertain this. She would have had to lost her mind in so many ways. What it would have taken? Okay, if she wanted to skate for the U.S., it would take seven years to get Olympic citizenship. So, like, what is the point? Like, what would? The, and, No, you think she's would go, she would partner with him? Jonathan, no, I think she'd coach. Jonathan, that has been whispered. I think she's coaching. I yeah, think of no, not in a million years do I personally believe that she would skate with him. I'm sure she's skating with him if if she's skating with him. How do you feel like, about her co-coaching with Delilah? Well, that's its own bag of stuff. Do you think differently of her because of that? Well, I mean. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. And then again, I don't think. Like, well, why does Eliana need like, a Delilah? She was like in a relationship with her coach, who was like a member of the Stasi. So like everyone in skating has a lot of damage. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. What are you desensitized to? You I know. Mean, I don't blame her for that. But no, that's not her fault. Like, listen, no. I mean, no. But you just think about like the intergenerational trauma of skating. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, again, why would Eliana maybe feel that she needs to be under someone maybe else? She's like, because remember, allegedly, U.S. figure skating told Tara and Danny to leave Delilah. The Finsters, the mother who even organized the Red Hats, took her kids out of there at the same time. But that's why I would thought, like, if the U.S. if USFS wanted they to, they just drink. don't know in Europe. Do you think they don't hear about it as much because they're they're not like or knowing that they just know that that comes with their territory and their. But I think like if you're getting that much money by Delilah, you'd be like, oh yeah, this is of course like, you'd have more of an incentive to believe that it's nothing, right? Because, hmm. and you're like, oh, Tara, Danny, we're never that good anyway. Like I could see if you're like blinded by the opportunity and the money. Like. Yeah, I'm sure she could rationalize any choice she wanted to make. But again, I thought she was gonna go do her own thing. Well, I mean, there aren't that many places where there are that many skaters who do pairs in the US. There's yeah. Colorado, there's like a couple skaters like in Detroit, a couple in Chicago. There like used to be pairs in Florida, there aren't any more. Right. There's Boston where the Letovs, like there's not that many pair teams. It's not like they grow on trees. 
you know? Have Although, you been- if she started doing it, I feel like you'd have to cultivate something. Wherever she did it, people would flock to it. I'm sure of it. I guess I just don't know why she feels she needs something that already quasi exists instead of going from the ground up somewhere. Build your own team. You know what I mean? Like, again, I, if I were a pair skater, I would have sought her out years ago. But whatever, I guess. I mean, you could look at the options. You could like team up with Delilah. You could team up with Sylvia and well, John's band. So you could team up with Sylvia. <laughs> like, um, suspend, suspend. Um, but if I were her, I'd get to like Japan or somewhere where they're trying to build a Paris program and have great skating already happening. I think she wants to go to the US. I'm sure that, they're, come on, to get that money? I mean, yeah. you have to deal with the parents, but like, come on. Yeah. Now, we'll in see Japan, what happens. Jis Lane is going to Japan for two months, but he's helping out Mia Hamada, which means he could be helping out Rika Kihira there. And apparently he will see uh, Yuzu Hanyu when he's in Japan, but he'll be based with Mia Hamada. Okay. Yuzu gets private ice where he skates. So that's probably doesn't need him every day, but I think that that's interesting that they will. Um, and this is in lieu of Rika going to Toronto. Well, I still think that if you go to Toronto, the thing is, is that you have to quarantine for two weeks. Still, okay. During the Olympics. So I wonder like, at what point, if they don't change that before the fall, how are you gonna have Skate Canada in Canada? Right, right. You know, they're trying to have an Olympics in Japan where the people don't want an Olympics. It's like, right. <laughs> yeah. that's not gonna fly in Canada. <laughs> like, right, right. NBC didn't pay like $2 billion to have Skate Canada. There's yeah. a part of me that foresees that all of the Grand Prix will happen. Except for Canada. And Skate Canada, yeah. Maybe they could like put that Grand Prix in another country, but we could also have like a Skate Canada where all the top Canadians skated. Like they did- Invite with- them to Finland or Korea or something, yeah. I'm just really upset. Like, don't you want Aliona to leave Monument? That's so gross. Like, yeah, I want, because I have put her on a pedestal. And I just, yeah, if you lay with dogs, you get fleas. Like, (laughs) Like, yeah, yeah. Wait, what is the phrase? I was forgetting it and I've been like thinking about it. What is the thing if you lay and what you get fleas? Well, so I know it as if you lay with dogs, you'll get fleas. Because isn't there an also like variation where it's like, if you lay with shit, you start to stink or like something like there's like there different variations of the same. None of them are elegant. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're all gross, but I think you get the gist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like her and that cute husband and he's drawing. Let's just think that like these people were so beneath Aliona that she just didn't pay attention, okay? Perhaps. You know, Lex is going to call her up on the phone and tell her? I don't think, listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, is there something, because of course they left Delilah, I guess. So maybe she, I don't know. I don't know. I will just always wonder what exactly went down there between Alexa and um, Aliona, because they're two very powerful women that I always found very interesting. And I just, the, her Aliona approach. was just Renee Roca. And we've only told Alexa to go to Renee Roca for choreography for years. Now, obviously Brandon had worked with Renee, but I did notice that Alexa had like purple hair that she edited in some picture and like put purple hair in Renee. Does that mean that they were vibing together? Do we get credit for that? Wow. I feel like we only yeah. get credit when it's negative. Okay. We right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, look, Lindsay Thorngren is working with Victor Petrenko on a triple axel. And apparently she landed like an under-rotated one on one foot, but like she's someone that gets her jumps and like lands them and then gets them rotated. Yeah. Do we get credit for suggesting that months ago? We only got credit when we didn't like the program, Jonathan. We only got credit for that, but do we give credit for the positive? Never, never. Never, never. okay. <laughs> no, all right. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but if we had recommended Chromatica. <laughs> did not, but like. No. I just want to watch Mariah Bell be interviewed at length about Black trans lives by Christine Brennan so we can judge how genuine or not this is. All right, that's just, 
Or and is, then, although and not let Adam a genuine her, or not genuine, Adam or not, and Lynn it's play have to be over there, and they cannot be feeding her talking points or lies. Okay, yeah. or going like this. If U.S. Figure Skating is going to write that in an article, okay, yeah, it was not even yeah. a Lynn Rutherford article. That was like I don't even know who this person is who wrote that. All right. Yeah, I sort of assumed it would have been Phil, but clearly from the writing style, it was not. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Forget Christine. Let Phil grill her on this. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, like, uh, yes. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing. We got like KMT too. Culture. Wait. Spice, you didn't get me on the KMT because she just got her new short program. Right, and remember, she was originally supposed to skate to an original composition by Eric Radford. <laughs> but now <laughs> they're skating to, um, we don't know, but- with Yeah, Mark I was gonna say, and the post I saw, she did not announce the music. She just announced that it was Mark. Um, is Allison Perkis right also a choreographer? Is that her assistant coach? Does Allison Perkis coach everyone? She looks very young. I feel like we don't know enough about Allison Perkis. If but I was KMT, I would have run to the phone and called Aliona. I mean, for... <laughs> if I'm KMT, I know that I got to do something bold to be noticed. It may or may not be a Mark program. Aliona was mood at Kirsten Moore Towers when she saw her eating ice cream back in the day before she was with her nice husband. I don't think Kirsten's court, like, coaching her. Aliona yeah. said she didn't remember it. Okay, she didn't okay. say that it didn't happen. She said she didn't remember it. Okay. Okay. God, terrible. But she didn't say that's nothing I, that's something I never would have done either. She didn't, she didn't say, say that. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was many years ago. We've all made mistakes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> how competitive skaters. This can... world, this world of skating. Okay. <laughs> I think, Jonathan, I don't think that's going to happen. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Because then you sent that clip to me right before I think you had sent the clip of, um, I almost said Megan and Eric, Vanessa and Eric doing their throw. I thought that their throw looked good. Exit was interesting. I want to see the lifts. Remember, Megan told us that their lifts would only be level three. And the other thing is that Vanessa's taller than Megan. Remember, lifts were never their strength. Right. Vanessa, I mean, and Megan and Eric did lifts that were very basic in position and they made them work and they worked every angle to get the levels, but most of them weren't considered extremely complex lifts. That was not mm. their strength of their partnership. Yeah, the throws were where the magic was and the, throws, the side by sides, side by yeah. Side. And really the consistency too, you know, like mm -hmm. if you think about it. Um, Vanessa had more interesting lifts with Morgan, but he's different physically, Eric's been injured. so. So they fit, they passed the first test, which is like the throws and the jumps and the skating looks good together on Instagram. The side-by-side -side stroking immediately look, had an elegance to it, yeah. Now we need to see the lifts and we need to see them in the program. Yeah. Because that changes everything. And how often can you train? And this, because I'm curious, because the lifts are worth so much now. And if that's not your strength and you're not doing the Lutzes, then like, what is their competitive advantage going to be? And you have three Russian pairs that really optimize those. No, I think they can be in the top in Canada. Like in the top two, top two to three in Canada, I think yes. But when we're talking like international, like, because if you make a mistake, your skating skills go down, right? And like, they can't really be like lovey-dovey. And Vanessa wasn't known for having good skating skills with Morgan, like that was, and Eric, like, had the potential to be components, but he and Megan were considered a components team. Right. So you're like, what is their thing going to be? I'm curious. I'm, I don't know. I'm curious to watch. They do look good. They look like... It may or may not have an elevated Ashley and Tim quality to it. Are elevated. You, you are damning elevated. people with faint praise, okay? No, Josh? I mean... <laughs> He's a communicator. <laughs> but she is a communicator. I mean, I mean, come on, Jonathan Byer. Oh my God. But I feel like they're bringing those kinds of quality, like some extension, some performative ability, like at a higher level, but it'll be interesting to see how they match it. 
Wow, you are cold. I stand by the comment. I stand by the comment. <laughs> well, in sad news, um, Camille and Drew um, retired. He's really talented. So mm -hmm. yeah, he, he could skate without him. I mean, and it was because she she was having a hip issue, right? Yeah, knee problems, hip problems. Yeah. Knee, so, um, and Elaine Chartrand retired. I feel like we knew right. that, she retired, that she officially retired. So, I don't know. I mean, we see yeah. we don't see people in competition for a long time. It's like, well, really, again, the Chartrand moment for me will always be the cameraman at that Ross Telecom Cup. I don't know, you're being so mean again. Yes, of course, I remember that. She said, "Isn't she a Canadian champion?" She is a Canadian champion. After that, after that, yeah. You cannot say you couldn't just be like you know Canadian champion, great career. Jonathan's like, no. I remember when she looked like a hot freaking mess, and the Russians. Yeah, just but that wasn't about her. That was about a cameraman. That's how she's been in better. Remember that guy in the audience that was like. And then, but then there was that woman that was just Russians like this. on sports. Are you? one of the greatest skating moments of all time. Yes, your cameraman was very shady. And yes, it's what we expect from Russia. So when you see it, when they talk about how awful we are, go look at your own. Because I think it was Rika Hongo, maybe skated after Chartrand. And that was the one where instead of showing her replays of jumps, they just showed Kovtun making out with his girlfriend in the audience. And you're like, okay, they're giving us some really entertaining and footage. Remember, They're like, not really interested in the analysis. Felt like that was when Paulina Edmonds wore the Gone with the Wind costume that we didn't love. That was when like Medvedeva was crying and Radionova was crying to Titanic. And so Nikova was crying because she came back with just Simala. It is an event. All right? Yeah, it's yeah. Full of some stellar cinematography. Stop. Yeah. Hold it, Angela, look sexy, everyone. 